The unfold box contains an additional strap, a user manual, and the unfold brace. The use of unfold brace is upon doctor's recommendation only. The unfold brace consists of three parts, the brace's body, the cushion, and the strap. Before setup, explain to the parents that the therapy is not painful for the baby and that the average therapy duration is between six to eight weeks of a 24-hour therapy and then an additional six to eight weeks of an overnight-only therapy. The therapist is the only person to determine therapy duration according to the severity of the case and the progress made during the therapy. The three types of parameters are considered to determine the severity of the case. The first one is the HEALS bisector classification, which is performed using a ruler according to Bleck's method. Put the ruler in the middle of the heel and check the heel bisector line. The ruler should properly point towards the second toe. If it points towards the third toe, then the severity is low. Towards the fourth toe, moderate severity. Towards the fifth toe, high severity. In our case, the ruler points between the fourth and fifth toes. According to this parameter, the examination result is moderate to high severity. The second examination checks the flexibility of the baby's foot. Hold the foot and try to move its upper part. If you manage to move the joint outwardly, beyond a straight leg position for over repair, then the foot has high flexibility, which indicates low severity. If you didn't achieve over repair, but only neutral, then the severity is moderate. And if you couldn't even achieve a neutral position, then the severity is high. The third examination checks the medial crease. If there's a medial crease, this is a parameter which indicates a situation where the foot won't go normal without medical intervention. Before starting the therapy, it is recommended to take a picture of the foot to monitor the therapy progress. You can make adjustments to the unfold brace if needed, depending on the foot shape. First adjustment would be the enlargement of the ankle area. The back side of the inner part of the unfold brace is bisected to release pressure from the ankle area in case the baby's foot is wide or large in the back. The enlargement is performed by making a hole in the designated area and making a cut all along to the bottom of the ankle. Another possible adjustment would be releasing pressure from the toe. If the baby's toe is inclined upwards, the pressure on it must be released by making two holes in the soft area, which is on top of the rigid area in the toe fastener and making a cut to connect the holes. Before the unfold brace is installed on the baby's foot, a sock must be worn. It's very important for the sock to be 100% cotton, tight, and folds free. Folds might cause redness around their area. Before the setup, place the cushion as close as possible to the brace's body. After bringing the cushion and the brace's body together, hold the foot and place the heel in its position directly Hold up the toe fastener and insert the rest of the foot. Make sure that the heel and the end of the brace have a tight contact and that the whole foot tightly touches the bottom of the brace. After inserting the foot into the brace, adjust the cushion so it's in the center of the foot, aligned with the middle of the shin. Embrace the foot and the cushion together tightly and avoid any void between the foot and the cushion. Thread the strap and stretch it over the foot and the brace's body. Don't over-tighten the strap forcibly. Tightening the strap properly will ensure that the brace is fixed and won't move away. After finishing the setup, remove the brace from the baby's foot and ask the parents to try and perform the setup by themselves until they perform it correctly. Explain to the parents how to conduct the situation during the following weeks. During the first day, the brace must be removed every two hours for 10 minutes. The brace must be reinstalled again when the 10 minutes are over. During the first night, there is no need to remove the brace unless the baby cries and no other reason for his crying was found. In that case, the brace must be removed for the first night only and then set up again in the morning. 
During the second day, the brace must be removed every two hours for 10 minutes until the evening bath. After the bath, the first two weeks protocol is initiated. During the first two weeks, the brace must be set up 24 hours a day. The brace must be removed only twice a day, in the morning to change the baby's clothes and socks, and in the evening to give the baby a bath and to change their clothes. Two weeks after the first installation, the patient should visit the therapist to run the first checkup. Usually, depending on the severity of the case and the instructions of the therapist, the brace must be worn 24 hours a day for about six to eight weeks, and then 15 hours a day for three to four weeks, followed by 12 hours a day for an additional three to four weeks. Explain to the parents about three possible side effects of the therapy and how to deal with them. Slight foot redness is very common and regular, which requires no special treatment. If the redness is strong, it is recommended to put two pieces of medical paper band-aid on the red area and continue with the therapy regularly. If bed sores or blisters appear on the baby's foot, a problem that occurs mostly due to over-tightening of the strap or improper setup, then therapy must be stopped for about two hours. Anti-irritation cream for the skin should be applied on the area, and then the area should be covered with a Band-Aid. After two hours, therapy should be continued regularly. If things get worse, consult your therapist. If the baby removes the brace from their foot, check if it was set up according to the instructions. If so, we recommend wrapping the brace three times from the heel to the cushion using a medical paper band-aid. It is recommended to get a first checkup two weeks after the first setup to monitor the progress of the therapy and the repairment that has been obtained. If the progress is satisfying, instruct to continue a 24-hour therapy for additional four weeks. A second checkup should be performed after six weeks of a 24-hour therapy. Depending on the therapy progress, decide whether the patient can switch to a 15-hour overnight therapy or continue with the 24-hour therapy for a certain period of time. A third checkup should be performed after three weeks of a 15-hour overnight therapy. Depending on the therapy progress, Decide whether the patient can switch to a 12-hour overnight therapy or continue with the 15-hour overnight therapy for a certain period of time. If you observe a regression in the therapy progress, you may also decide to return to a 24-hour therapy for an additional two to four weeks. A fourth checkup should be performed after three weeks of a 12-hour overnight therapy. Depending on the therapy progress, decide whether the patient is done with therapy or it should be continued.